belong in what we're talking about today as we continue on in our series on faith friends. Now let me just kind of give you a little understanding of how we came to the place that we are. Um, this whole element of Old Testament examples that we see here in Hebrews 11 displaying faith with this New Testament writer putting it down. If you recall, just before we came into the series, we were in the series we called The Threes. Remember that in Philippians? Philippians chapter 4, and I think it was 4 through 9. And there were the three suggestions that Paul gave to successful living. There was, if you remember, there was rejoice, and there was praying, and then there was like resting or enjoying peace. The thing is, is that what we have done is that we have found a list of people who have put the threes into practice in their life, and they're calling they're called faith friends. So that's why we've come into this, because we're we've kind of really pulled those two together to make one spectacular understanding. Isn't it good to see the Bible gives us these these wonderful teachings, and then what does it do? It gives us illustrations and examples of people who fulfill that in their life. So this is a, a fulfillment, you might say. And what we have here in Hebrews 11, we have this great listing of the hall of faith, people of faith, whether great faith, small faith, they're found here. And they are all people that God is able to boast of. People that He's able to brag about. And it's amazing when you see it all from God's perspective. So faith, friends, is meant to encourage you in trusting and believing God. That's why we're just saying, let faith arise. That's our theme song of this series that we're going through. So let's meet today. We gave a bit of an introduction of what faith was all about. Let's meet today our first faith friend. And we see it in verse 4. <clears throat> Hebrews 11 and verse 4. And the King James says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, and God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. And if you want to get it a little bit more in the modern way we speak, the English Standard Version says that Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him by accepting his gift, and through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. Our first faith friend is Abel. And as you see up there, you can't talk about Abel without talking about Cain, can you? Because that's why we understand, well, okay, we know people in the Old Testament are dead. But earlier this week, we heard on the news, before they dispelled any kind of, of information up there in Plymouth, that, uh, that there was an untimely death. Okay? And then we learned a little bit more about a homicide. Well, there was an untimely death here too. And there was a homicide here too. That's explained to us. So you don't see that until you get into the life of Cain and Abel. At Genesis chapter 14, and, and one of the things we've been doing uh, in the worship folder has been giving you on the next page over some of these things written down. Although it's good for you to look them up in your Bible too. That's why we don't put all the verses in but we have it here in the, uh, the uh, what's called the Century English Version, or Contemporary English Version, Genesis 4, 1 through 14. So let me read the story for you. Because, as I said, you can't talk about Abel without talking about Cain. Adam and Eve had a son. This is Genesis 4, verse 4, I think. No, nope, verse 1. Adam and Eve had a son. Then Eve said, I'll name him Cain because... I got him with the help of the Lord. Later she had another son and named him Abel. Abel became a sheep farmer, but Cain farmed the land. One day Cain gave part of his harvest to the Lord, and Abel also gave an offering to the Lord. He killed the firstborn lamb from one of his sheep and gave the Lord the best parts of it. The Lord was pleased with Abel and his offering but not with Cain and his offering. 
This made Cain so angry that he could not hide his feelings. The Lord said to Cain, What's wrong with you? Why do you have such an angry look on your face? If you had done the right thing, you would be smiling, but you did the wrong thing. And now sin is waiting to attack you like a lion. Sin wants to destroy you, but don't let it. Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go for a walk. And when they were out in a field, Cain killed him. Afterwards, the Lord asked Cain, where is Abel? How should I know, he answered. Am I supposed to look out for my brother? Then the Lord said, why have you done this terrible thing? You killed your own brother, and his blood flowed onto the ground. Now his blood is calling out for me to punish you. And so I'll put you under a curse, because you killed Abel and made his blood run out of the ground, you will never be able to farm the land again. You will try to farm the land, it won't produce anything for you. From now on, you'll be without a home, you'll spend the rest of your life wandering from place to place. This punishment is too hard, Cain said. You're making me leave my home and live far from you. I have to wander about without a home, and just anyone could kill me. Now you get the story. You've heard it before. You kind of know the ins and outs of it. Isn't it interesting, though, that God took this man, this young man, whose life was so short, and really one incident that we read about in Scripture of faithfulness, God put him number one in the Hall of Faith. Isn't that amazing? Because that's the way God thinks. That's the perspective of God. God honors greatness even in the midst of littleness. So here's a little thing, but great to God. So look what you have here. You have Cain the rebellious, right? Cain the rebellious, who's condemned because he questioned God's authority. And you have Abel the faithful who was honored because he accepted and obeyed God's mandate. So Abel is here in this great hall of faith of Hebrews 11, unlike his brother, who is in the hall of shame. Right? Now notice this. Because this is really, really awesome. Just this little act of faith. And what, what does God do? God boasts. He boasts of obedience. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice, it says. Now let me ask, is meat more important to God than fruit or vegetables? You see, the issue here is not the sheep meat versus the harvest fruit. The issue is obedience. The issue is obedience. I mean, God loves our heart of sacrifice. But there was a means to do it. Okay. For example, Jonah. Jonah was told to get on a ship and go. All right? Did he obey? Well, he got on the ship. All right? But he went which way? The other way. The other way. He wasn't obeying. And then all those issues that took place in his life until he finally got it right and then went the right way. So you see what I'm saying? It's not so much the whole idea of the, the meat and the potatoes, if I can put it that way. But the issue was obedience. The offering in view here is a sacrificial offering. The one God required in the shedding of blood. But God not only boasts of obedience, He brags about His children of faith. And so Abel, it says, He offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice through Cain, uh, than Cain, through which He was commended as righteous. Look at this boy, God says. I can brag on this guy. Because He fulfills His faith by obeying. So notice this, the statement about righteousness is significant. Amen.